Well, so much has happened within the space of a week. When I sent out my first message last Thursday, things were very different from the way they are today. At that point, schools were open, cafes, pubs and restaurants were still thriving, and most people were working, albeit from home. And interestingly, our churches were open for private prayer and reflection. Today, we're almost completely locked into our homes, only going out for essentials such as food and medicine. Most shops and many businesses are now closed and our church is firmly shut. I too am now working from home, though as a key worker, I'm allowed to do essential things such as funerals and those are already on the increase. These are really extraordinary times. And I guess each of us will already have faced challenges. Some of our congregation have had symptoms of the coronavirus itself and been quite unwell. And their families have had to self-isolate for 14 days. Some of our older members are struggling to get fresh fruit, fruit and vegetables with food deliveries being fully booked for the next three weeks. Some are facing financial challenges ahead as businesses lay off staff and self-employed struggle to keep their work going. Others are feeling the impact of loneliness. As a family, we faced our elder daughter Hannah and her husband Peter having to scramble to book one of the very last planes out of Kenya as the borders close and they've simply had to leave possessions behind, unsure as to whether they'll be able to return. So how can we live well during these times? Or perhaps a more challenging question for us as Christians, are there ways in, this in, ways in which this time could be a gift to us? Well, I find it interesting that we're in the middle of Lent. Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness, a wilderness of loneliness, hunger, isolation and testing. Yet from that time he emerged ready to begin his extraordinary ministry in Galilee and beyond. How could this time be a gift to us? A time that's not wasted, but prepares us for more fruitful living in the years ahead. Well, one thing I'm sure of, this is a time in which we can give ourselves to prayer. It's an opportunity to learn to pray in a deeper way, maybe to enable our households to do that together. If you've got children at home, you could include them, reading Bible stories and saying simple prayers, maybe at mealtimes. So often we're too busy for God, but now things are different. And the reality is that he is very close to us, longing for us to turn to him, to involve him in the struggles that we're all facing. The best resources on prayer, in my view, are on the Church of England website. You simply go to that website and click on prayer and worship. And there are wonderful resources there, which are incredibly easy to access. You might like to join in with morning prayer, prayer during the day, evening prayer or night prayer to set yourself a rhythm to follow. When we join in with those services, we're joining with Christians throughout the world, reading the same passages of the Bible, praying the same prayers, and it gives a wonderful sense of solidarity. On that same Church of England website, there are digital services to watch. There's guidance on how to begin, how to begin to pray, finding a space in your home, setting up a candle or an icon maybe, finding a good posture so that you're comfortable. There are apps to download to make things easy. In my home, we now say morning and evening, prayer together as a family, as a household, in the way that I would have done at All Saints when the church was opened. And it brings us close to one another in a way that nothing else does. So my prayer for today is that despite the challenges, this time can be a gift, a blessing to us in new ways. Let's continue to look out for each other, for families, our neighbours, our friends. If you find someone in need, do let me or Marguerite or Trish know. We've had many offers of help and we can link you with someone who may be able to shop or deliver food or simply be available for a chat. I will continue to pray for you, each of you by name, every week. 
And my hope is that you'll discover the truth of the Lord's promise through Isaiah. The Lord says, I will give you hidden treasures, riches stored in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. <laughs>